And our title of our Sunday School lesson uh, today is Faith and Righteousness, in which I believe is a good lesson to start off the new year, talking about faith and talking about righteousness. Um, uh, we will be coming from the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrew, uh, uh, about um, 12 verses, I believe we would not be doing all 40, it's being broke up. But the, this chapter, Hebrew, uh, in the book, the, this chapter, the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrew, is one of the most studied chapters in the Bible. And it also is uh, one of the chapters that uh, a lot of people who are not religious look at, and they have a point of history to go back and find these people, and it tells about them. And they were all in order. In the order that they, it all come in order of the way that, that through the ages that they was doing things. Uh, 17, of, 17 of them was uh, called by name, but it allured to four others. We won't have time to get to that, but this is also called the Bible Hall of Faith. And a lot of people like looking at this here. Uh, because th these these are real people. They was not no superheroes. They were not Superman, Batman, Aquaman, or none of those people. They were just regular people. Cain, Abel, um, uh, Joshua. Um, they were just regular people with regular names, not with supernatural powers or nothing. It was just something that they was noted in the Hall of Faith. And I know most churches, if you go to them in their uh, fellowship hall, they have people's names up in there, uh, peoples of faith, but help, help with the church or help with things. And this is what the Bible is doing here in the um, 11th chapter of the book of Hebrew, which is our lesson today coming in. And like I say, these were just common people, and they was not no heroes. There was nothing supernatural about these people. They bled, they married, they uh, walked, and they lived in the time where they were. They was just natural people. And if we come to our day, even in our neighborhoods, in our churches, on our job, we see people who have uh, nothing super, but they did the right thing at the right time, and they was blessed for it. And this, how this has come about. Let's look at the first uh, verse, and I believe it set the tone for everything. It said, now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. I like the way it begins. It says, now faith. Now, I'm not an English major, but if you put a comma between now and faith, you let it know it's talking about two different things. Now, at this present time, at this moment, where we at right now, now. Then it's talking about faith, letting you know what it is. Faith is the substance. It's something that you have to see. Faith is something that you see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Before we go on, I want you to know that faith involves seeing something. If you go out through this chapter, we don't have time, like in the third verse, in the third verse, it uh, let us know that it's something that's being seen. It's a through faith we understand the framework of God so that things which were seen, it have to be seen, it have to be seen. And if we go down to part of the, uh, a part of the seventh verse, it said, now faith being worn of things not seen. In other words, something, faith is something that, is not seen, but it can be seen. Go down, if go down through the tenth and the thirteenth and the fourteenth verse. I'm trying not to uh, jump all over the place, but when you look at it and you read it, is that faith is seen? It's seen. It, it, it's going to be seen. Not, not. You know, it, it's being seen. Let me let me give you the definition first. It's three kinds of faith, and I'm gonna let you know which one we're talking about. Three kinds of faith. The first one, what we all must have, is that saving faith. We got to believe God is. We got to believe he's the one that can save us. And we got to believe that he's all of us. That is that saving faith. You got to have saving faith before you can even begin this journey. 
if you don't believe God is, if you don't believe God can save you, and if you don't believe God is God, you, can, you are not saved. So you got to have the saving faith first. Then it is the gift of faith. In the book of Corinthians, it lists some faith. I mean, it lists a lot of gifts that was going, up, going on. And faith is, around among, among, is among a lot of the, among them. Faith. Got to have that gift of faith that some people had the gift that they believe. And, and one of the greatest ones, I like bringing up all our apostolic, apostolic fathers and stuff. And I think everyone would know who this person is. Um, Evangelist Maddie B. Poole, she had that kind of faith that she believed for some of the people who didn't get healed. She had that kind of faith that she believed because of who she was and by putting the word out, and she called it out by faith and called them and they was healed. Some of them didn't even have the faith that they could be healed. That's someone with the gift of faith. Like we can see something, a lot of our forefathers they saw things and they believed it but they saw it and they believed it because God showed it to them you see and that is the gift of faith and then we have the living faith what we come through in our lesson today in the book the 17th I mean the uh, 11th chapter of the book of Matthew is that living faith and we all must have some part of that living faith too but like I gave you the three kinds of faith the saving faith the gift of faith and the living faith. And in this chapter, we will be dealing with the living faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. And by faith, the elders attain a good report. In other words, I like, uh, when you dissect that, um, that um, one verse, when they say the elders did that, our forefathers, they attained a good report because through faith. Through their faith, we are here right now. Through their faith, we learn. Through, well, through the elders, we don't have to just say in the church, someone uh, made a car. At first, a car wouldn't go no uh, further than two or three miles. Now we go from one end of the country to the next, almost 3,000 miles. We got faith that that transportation can take us and keep us through the weather. By faith, the elders attain a good report. Through faith, with faith in God, with the faith, what, I'm, what we are talking about, that living, that living faith that we just believed in God. And our elders attain a good report. And in looking at this lesson, the third verse, and I would not try to be on this third verse too long. It says, by faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things that were that things which do appear. You can't go no further on faith if you don't believe, like I said, that who God is. If you don't believe that God made this world, God formed the world out of nothing by faith with nothing there, but in his eyes, he saw the world and he made it. And now we see it. By faith, well, no matter what any scientist could say, I remember in school I had to learn what the M theory was. The M theory is that this matter was over here and this matter was over here, and through time they got together and a great big old explosion happened. But in common sense, if anything is going to explode, it's going to tear it up. Is not going to bring it all together. So the M theory, I believe he was Dr. Hawkins, I think that is his name, called me up later and we'll find the real name if that's not it. I, I could not understand that if you put two things coming together as an explosion, that is blowing up. It's tearing it up. It's not bringing it together. But in the word of God, he brought it together and then he spoke by faith. By faith. He could not see it. He just spoke it into existence. You know, by faith, he spoke the world, and it was shaped. Didn't, need a, didn't have a hand. God don't have a hand. God is a spirit. He don't have a hand. All he had was his word, and he spoke it. And by faith, we have to believe that. No matter what, they can't come up with nothing. 
Anything they come up with is just supernatural. It just happened. God spoke it. And that's just how living faith is. The stuff that you can't see, but you want it to happen, and that's why I told you in the beginning of this lesson, uh, if you have anything involved in faith, it's involved in sight or sin. You got to see it. It might not be there, but it is going to happen. That's faith. If faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen, not, not seen. But you have, it is part of being, being seen. You got to see it. Uh, by faith, in verse 4, by for faith, Abel offered up to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, which, which he obtained a witness obtained witness that he, that he, well, excuse me, let me uh, read it again. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteousness. God testified to his gift, and by it, it was being, it, being dead, yet he spoke. In other words, eight had Abel, by faith, offered up a more excellent sacrifice to God because he did what God told him to do. Let's look at this scenario. Cain and Abel was not in uh, the garden. Only two people, only two human beings alive <clears throat> ever been in the garden. That was just Adam and Eve. They was put out. And this, uh, and it was, and it was this thing. Uh, the angel was put there, keeping everybody out. So the two, though they never saw paradise, or they never saw the garden of Eve. And God began to uh, grow things and let them see things, and by faith He offered a sacrifice. Now this is only in theory, and it's allude to this here, and a sacrifice. The plants always grew in the garden. But the animal was created. So it took a sacrifice. <coughs> so it took a sacrifice. And by faith, Abel, Abel believed through the blood sacrifice that God would accept it. And Cain did not have one. I'm getting a little, little deep with it. But Cain, but Cain being a tittle of the ground and everything that grew up and really did not take no sacrifice because everything was right there. And it grew up. And by faith, Abel had the more perfect sacrifice because, um, the, yeah, the more perfect sacrifice because it took the blood. And, and I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to get into the blood, but I want you to see that his sacrifice was being seen, but it always happened. If you pick beans and if so much you tittled it again, it's going to grow back up. But a sacrifice is something that is gone and it's, it's not there anymore. And that was a sacrifice. I know it was a little, little odd, but it was something that had to be seen. And these are all the people who walk it through, the, um, through faith. And look, um, this here, when, uh, going down, skipping down to verse uh, 7, it said, By faith, nor, want, nor been warned of God, been warned of God of things not seen as yet, Moved with fear, prepared the ark and the sand of and the savings of his house. And and let's back to the garden and back to the earth. A, um, Cain, I mean uh, Noah, was a man preaching by faith. It had never rained in that. It had never rained in that time. And I'm going to try to explain it to you the best I know. And it has been proven that uh, it's only been raining for the last, uh, what, uh, about a billion years. It didn't used to rain on this earth. But the mist, and if you dig so far down in the earth now, you get water. But the mist would come up from the ground, and it was something like a vapor over the earth that kept it in. And it was no rain, but they had water, and the people would survive because this body is made of a... 90% water, and we got to have water, and people survive. And here come a preacher 
preaching that it's going to rain and that we are going to uh, be saved through the rain. Uh, you know, uh, they probably could understand it was a flood or something. A flood could happen, could flood the land, but not a flood on that uh, manner. And he was building the ark from uh, not on the water. He was building it on dry land. And by faith, and by faith, they saw this here, a man of faith. Uh, come on, let me go, go with this here, building a church. Back in West Virginia, when we started a church with uh, me, my wife, three kids, God say start a church in your house. We was already in the church building a school, had built a school and stuff, but he said do that. Here I am, a young preacher, had a young wife, and she, had, she was looking at me, but I said by faith. In our basement, I put a sign out front that we were starting a new church the first day a family came. What about a sign? That's by faith. Because God say do it, and you just go and do it. You don't understand why. You just go do it. And by faith, one family came. The Lynch family came over. Stayed right. They still there today. They came over all about a sign, and all I believed and had faith. And saw it was, and God give you the plan on how everything, he just don't throw you out there. I only knew I was going to be there three years and get it started. So within three years, coming from the basement of your house, we own the church. Not was buying a church. We own the church. Own the church. God had put, like he, how by faith he put you, you don't know why your life is going so, so many places, you know, and doing certain things. But at the time, with that third year after we had got into this church, uh, what a hundred thousand dollar church where we got for thirty some thousand dollars by faith standing there telling the man we didn't have that and didn't have but five thousand dollars and had to go to the council to go get that one but we're standing by faith standing before the person to get that but after, in that third year a man was running for governor I was in politics at the time yes I was in politics and he had won in the third year when it was my time to go I went and testified to him about what was going on and by the loan. Then to find out later, he was chairman of the bank and wrote the whole thing off. And the church is still there today called Grace and Mercy Apostolic Church. But God told me it was going to be a three years. When I left the people, where that started with one family, it was 160 Ties fan members there. When we left, you know, and they still there today. They did not own nothing. I mean, they owned everything, and I did, not, I did not leave them in a big thing or nothing like that. Never tried to pastor them at any time. Just started the church and called people in until they got them a pastor in three years. And, and that's how I did because if you know your calling and you know when you walk by faith and you know you're supposed to be somewhere in a faith, and, and you're going to be there. And, and I'm getting back to the lesson, but you, that's when you go down through the hall of faith that you know. If I hadn't seen the faith of uh, uh, evangelist Maddie B. Poole, if I hadn't seen the faith of uh, who uh, Bishop Paddock, uh, even th today, uh, my friend Bishop Rogers, his faith when he left Mississippi and came here. I haven't seen his faith, all of that. That's why faith is something that we have to see. That's the living faith. Now, that's the living faith. You know, and a lot of people, uh, I'm trying to stay with the outline, now, a lot of people are getting faith mixed up. It's a difference between faith in God and faith in faith. You know, faith in faith is people saying they got faith, and if you ain't got it, you know, God don't told you you got that cancer, and they got to be cut out, get the cancer cut out. Faith is that the doctor know what he's doing. Not faith is not sitting there waiting on your healing. That's a whole different thing. If God have already told the doctor that they got it, go with it. That's the faith. You got to believe you got to go through it. You can believe in that you're going to get up after it. That's a different than faith in faith and faith in God. Faith in God is believing that God is going to take care of it. Like Moses, um, Noah, now I'm back on, this, on the scripture, Noah did not understand anything about rain. He did not, he, Noah was the uh, grandson of Methuselah, and Methuselah was the son of Enoch. Now, Enoch was a just man, 
and did not see death, and he was translated. Okay, North Grandfather Methuselah. Now, I wish I had time to do the timeline to let you see that how the faith came down and people seeing that, that how Noah probably heard from his grandfather about Enoch, a man who walked with God and was translated, was taken. Uh, this word translated, if we get down there, mean that was taken, was gathered up. It was not heard from. And it wasn't nothing crazy that he was missing, that somebody had kidnapped him. They knew he was walking with God, <coughs> and in the midst of it, he was taken away. Uh, if you don't mind me thinking like this here, it probably was like Ezekiel in the middle of the wheel, that someone seen him going, a righteous man, somebody, somebody that's living for God, and all of a sudden, God take him away. We, we see that sometimes here in church. When we see our, spe our, our good speaker preaching and God get it to him, we know when God is using it. You know if you got the Holy Ghost, you know when they're using it. You know when they're talking about going to a, a new level. <coughs> and that's what this hymn was about. He was going to a new level. Uh, nor people, uh, nor he had that faith. He had the faith that his great-grandfather was taken away. He's seen that. And Methuselah lived to be 669 years old. Just think about from year after year, this man was supposed to be gone. But he was living through faith. And that's who, and he saw, that, and uh, uh, Noah saw that. And another thing about Noah, for what look at it, and I think I remember this here. You can call me out on it. Noah lived to be 665 years. And the Bible, in the book of Genesis, said that he walked with God 600 years. Those other 65 years, he saw something, uh, something happen within the change. And that's how it is with us sometimes. Sometimes faith, we have to get our faith uh, uh, connected with someone. We come, we, that's why you should come to church. And sometimes it's not even in church. Sometimes you just need to be in the right place. But how many times we come here and by faith, this sister stand up and say, I'm going to believe God and trust God for this. And then it happened. That's the hall of faith. When we know somebody like that had happened, uh, everybody know me, Evangelist Mildred Boyd was one of the oldest, late, I'm talking about our hall of faith now, who, uh, one of the oldest preachers to come through had, had the oldest license. The only person on record anywhere in the world that she healed, her, her son was healed from AIDS. Could not understand it. Said he had, said her son had AIDS, and she said, and he died, to be honest. I think he died. And she told him, don't touch him until I get there. She was preaching in my church in Mississippi, so I know this firsthand. She stopped it and told him, don't touch my son until I got there, and went there to the, uh, uh, went there to the, where the undertaker was and prayed for him, and he stood up and said, Mama, where are you? The undertaking, everybody got scared. They got scared of that woman. And when they tested him all over again, AIDS was gone. That's it. By faith, that's something that I have seen. And that's uh, going through the hall of faith, what these are going through. And on this first day of the year, we might have to reflect on some things, what people went through. <coughs> and by faith, we got to connect with their faith. Because, you know, it is faith. That is one thing. Faith is something that you have seen. It's that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Even though it haven't come to pass, we got to believe. Nor believed it was going to rain. He just believed it through all of the things what we have saw. That, that's one thing. Living, living faith, you know, living faith is, is, is our encouragement. We talk about going back through the testimonies. Maybe we need to because it was about that living faith where we saw through people's lives that things that they went through that we know we could go through today. But even if we don't, saints of God, class today, we got to tell someone. We got to tell it because I made it through something at uh, work today. Because I made it through something at work today don't mean that you can uh, that you it mean that you can go through the same thing. 
Man, I don't know. Uh, every time I get to talk, I talk to my sisters here and my brothers here that are in education. <coughs> <coughs> And we talk about things, what we went through. And through what they have went through, I use some of it. It ain't nothing, not, it's nothing new under the sun. But through their faith, if it worked there, it can work over here. Uh, because they believe and they went through, I might not go back through the same thing. But by faith, you know, living faith. That's what the 11th chapter of the book of Matthew is talking about, uh, living faith. I told y'all at the beginning I'm probably not going to be on this outline with them because when you talk about faith, it's just so much stuff you just, it's so much stuff you have to uh, deal with. There's so much stuff you have to deal with. And going down to the eighth verse, let, let's pick up another one of the people in the hall of faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go to a, pla uh -oh, go to a place which you should afterward receive an inheritance, Obeyed and went and went out, not knowing whether he went. Sometimes we have this year, okay, this year might be people who have to go out. Might have to go out by faith, might tell you to go out on your neighbor. Get that crazy faith. When I was in Atlanta, I had to preach to someone, and I told them, go out on go out in the streets. Get your, get start your own ministry. Just holding up a sign, the address of your church. church. You, know, you don't understand about how to tell people how to get saved? Just hold up a sign on the corner. Walk out through the mall. Put it on, put it on the back of your car. Um, uh, you know, something like that. Now, this is the year, <coughs> excuse me, this is the year we got to get crazy. We got to get crazy. With, we have to get crazy with our faith. Uh, Getting out there, we don't understand how we you know how uh, it's going to come. The prophecy have went out that we are going to fill this church. Let's make it this year. That's it. You know, through faith, we know we we don't understand every anoint your uh, feet every time you get up and walk out your house. Anoint your feet. Uh, and just walk, and everywhere you step, say this is holy ground. Someone step in your uh, step in the place where you step. Ain't no time. Something might happen. Something might happen. Like I had a card of the church in my uh, in my wallet. I always keep a card of the church in my wallet. I lost my wallet, and they called the church. And Pastor Anderson, they called Pastor Anderson, and Pastor Anderson uh, was able to talk to him and tell him about coming to church. And the person came to church and gave me my wallet, and the money was in it. That was, you know, that's what I'm saying. Take the card. We, we are printing up all of this stuff using good money. Put it in your wallet. Put it somewhere in your car. You know, through faith. Believe it in faith. And believe it, and as it goes out, lay it at the doctor's office. Just lay one of them. I ain't saying laying a hundred of them. Lay one of them. You know, you, you use wisdom with it. And just lay it out. We, we don't pray it over it. It's talking. By faith, I believe that card protected my $300. It, look, it got in the right, right place. And I believe just because I had that card, what I'm sure, knowing my pastor, he had prayed on every card that went in the box. That they got it and they looked at it and they just couldn't take the money. They just saw it and just saw the preacher's name and called. And he called me to get my wallet. See, that's that see that we got to have that kind of faith. We we just got to believe that. We just we just we just got to believe. We say Sunday school is going to uh, uh be full. We got to believe that Sunday we got to believe that Sunday school is getting getting ready to be full. And it's gonna be you and me that do it. When we come to Sunday school, let's bring a good offering. Let's bring a good offering sometime. I told you I'll get it in somewhere. Let's bring a good offering because when we pray over that, when we pray over the offering by faith, we don't see how God is multiplying it when the word comes through it. But through faith, you know, the offering for the Sunday school, the offering for the church, it's going to help this year. Uh, we all believe it. I'm not preaching. I'm teaching. I promise you. Uh, we all believe that, don't we? we I, now listen here. You got to believe with me. If God had me coming from the, living, from the basement of a house to a big church in three years and told me it was going to be three years, 
And the last person to preach when I was there was my, my pastor. And he said, don't be despised of fall thing, uh, small thing. Because he remember, because he thought I was crazy. When they were telling me, I'm, I'm building up this church. I told him, I ain't never been no pastor. I know, I know my calling. I know what I'm supposed to be. But you just get told to do things and you have to do it. You know you're not a pastor. What it, the assignments that we get coming from the pulpit, take them to heart. That is coming from God. I think and praise God for my Sunday school teachers, and we're going to get back in faith, for my Sunday school teachers that gave us Sunday school lessons. It was so important that I did the Sunday school lesson sometime before I did the schoolwork. Because it was something about your soul. Now, the first faith we talked about was the saving faith. We believe we all got that saving faith. He saved us for something. He saved us for something. I, pro I promise you, if you don't know your calling, just that's Acts, he, he will tell you. I promise you, you'll know your calling. You'll know your, you'll know your calling. You'll know what it is. That's that saving faith. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, but everyone... When, when you're on camera, you have to try to act right. Uh, when everyone uh, uh, gets saved, they are called to do something. You ain't called just to fill it up. Yes, we want the church filled, but everybody, when we leave on Sunday morning or Tuesday night or Wednesday night, prayer or teaching, when we leave out, we leave out to work. That's the faith. I'm, if I have a if I had a prophecy I had to tell someone that if they, if they don't uh, let their kids go to church, or not church, go to school because they was holding the kids out, I was in, I was in uh, church, in Bible class, and God told me to go call this person who was not in church. Sometimes we ain't got, sometimes I ain't got to tell my elders something. I ain't going to tell you something. It's going to be somebody out there. You walking in faith, you got to believe it. But I called this mother and told her, if you don't let, What's his name? Come to school. Something bad is getting ready to happen. And I told she knew who I was and she knew I cared about that child. And in the middle of that, she sent him the next day and the house called her father the day he came to school. Now, some see, we, we, we got to be God. God, you know, I'm not saying get uh, crazy and, and uh, be eating something and you go out and tell somebody a certain thing, but make sure that the calling and the election is sure and God will let you know that. And sometimes, you know, it's not, we are here, that, that's a testimony for the church, though. One thing, after all of that happened, she wanted to know about me. I said, it ain't nothing I did. It was God that did it. But if you want to go to church, my church is over here on Howard Falls. That's where, it was, you know, that's if you want to know that. You know, we get a testimony. We, we got to give honor to God, but we got to know. We don't, we don't pray and dance all over this ground here. We know it's holy. All the shouting we don't did and rolled on, we know it's holy. So we got let's get the people here to walk on holy ground by faith. If you if you don't have but that kind of faith to believe that if they walk through that door, they're gonna be saved, they can. Just look at the testimonies of people who come here. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I walked through the doors of the church and I fell in love. And I knew I was supposed to be in there. And at that time, I said, God, I'm, I'm talking this testimony is what we heard right here. If I hadn't went nowhere else, I was going to end it. But just by walking in here. And sometimes we got to do that. And, uh, and I'm getting old-fashioned, but I'm getting back to the, I promise you I'm going to get back to the outline. But we got to believe those old people, the hall of faith of the people who was walking, what did they do? Sister Maddie McGee, a preacher, never called herself a preacher, filled up our church in Sunday school. Walked, didn't believe in a car. She rode the bus everywhere she went or walked, didn't want to drive no car. Filled up. And I look at some of these people who are bishops now who have walked in just because this lady by faith believe it. And we got, we, we, and I'm finna go, I, I, I got in an argument with somebody. They kept saying, keep trying to tell me, and I'm trying not to call no names, uh, Edit the name out. They say the uh, 
some apostles, they, they look at that, see how the church did this here. Now he's taking over the same, uh, he's going he gonna to be the one taking over our church and stuff like that. Some apostles, he believe in the baptism of Jesus' name and all of that. I said, no, it ain't that. And I said, the stuff that he was getting, what he's talking about, come out of the church. And what we got to do is just put it back in there. It ain't nothing, you know, it ain't nothing, nothing so great that he's doing that we hadn't done. We just not doing it. Let's put it back in there. Talk about things good that in the church. We know, we know good. I, I love my pastor for that. It's not about the big anniversary. It's about the person that got baptized seven, uh, seven days ago. It's more, we're more excited about the baptism, not about the anniversary coming up, not about the, the programs, what we have. And we have the greatest programs in the city of Savannah. Yeah, you can leave that on there. We have the greatest programs here, but it's not about that. It's about when, we, when someone gets saved, we celebrate that. When someone repent of their sins, we celebrate. Now, you want to see a celebration over here at New Life Experience. Let some, you come over here today and get saved with us. You get saved, we'll show you a celebration. We'll call your name out. Put your name on lights because we know God is doing it. And if God is doing it, we want to be in the middle of all of that. And it's more about that than any program that we have going on next week or uh, getting ready to have next month. You know, we, we get ready and we put everything we got into that, but we celebrate, we celebrate new life over here. We sell it, we sell, we, I mean, I, I, I'm here every Sunday getting ready. Don't want to miss because I'm looking for you to come over to get baptized. Old person ready to get in the water right there. With, we want you to get baptized. If people wait around after church was tarry with you, they don't do the old-fashioned tarry no more. So we, we, you have to get it at the altar. We'll lay hands on you, and God will fill you right there. And that's what we get happy about over here. We talk. We want to go through our Hall of Faith peoples and stuff like that. Come over here this year. I know it's not in the outline, and you, we'll put your name on the Hall of Faith, what we have. Because, like I said in the beginning, these peoples in the beginning was not, they was not no superheroes. They didn't have nothing so special. It was nothing special about them. They didn't have no unique gifts. All they did was believe God. And you come over here, we will believe God with you, and God will do, work a miracle with you. He'll work a miracle in your life. And we're going we're to do one more, and then we're going to go into prayer. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at, uh, okay, this hymn one. And the verse 23, I'm, uh, they were skipping around. Verse 23. I say, by faith, Moses, when he was born, he had three, well, he had three months. He had three months of his parents because they, because they saw he was was a proper child, and that, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Okay, they saw that there was something about that child. I'm sure this person don't mind me telling their testimony. I just heard it yesterday. They getting ready to come out of their job because they want to teach their own kids, their grandkids. They see the gener generation because what? She sees something in her kids. She see the next pastors. She see the next Sunday school teachers. She see it. They come out, and this what Moses parents when when that child is, when we bring that child up here and we dedicate that child. We we I mean it. I mean it, cause look at how many how many come come back. My son, and I'm getting back to Moses. We dedicated him before we dedicated him before the Lord. Uh, he left, went to Job Corps, and went to the army. And the next thing he was telling me what kind of person he was looking for, and he was quoting all those scriptures about being saved and how this person had to be this and this person had to be that. And he found that person, and he married her and got three kids. And now they're talking about homeschooling. And I think it all began at the altar, the day when we dedicated that child and anointed that child. By faith, when we look at them, and, and let's be careful what we name our kids, too. Yeah. Excuse me. That's it. I, I promise you I'm not pastoring. I'm just teaching. I, I, yesterday I said I got to go through the lesson, but I'm going to teach it. But, uh, you know, we got to be careful what we name that child. Because I know... Excuse me, I'm African, but, you know, some of them names ain't right. 
So, you know, some of them, I, I don't want my uh, child having an antelope spirit. You know, sometimes that means high antelope. It sounds good and it's a perfect name. It sounds, but you know, but it said the antelope that jumped across the river. You know, I, I don't need my, ch I don't need him jumping unless he's jumping in the spirit. You know, and that's it. You know, we, you got to look at these names you know, just because they sound good. You know, and look what Ishmael did, and, and that's a pretty name. And I see a lot of our kids coming up with that name now. Let's see what they got read and what they was at war and always, know, you know, and when we look at some of them name in the, in, the, in the school, they got those names. And they, okay, I'll leave that alone. But, in the <coughs> but we have to be careful about them. But Moses, his parents, they saw that. And by faith, that's why faith, we see things. And when people come in, you know, when they come in and get saved, I just don't see the banker. Thank God the banker is coming. You know, I just don't see him as a banker. We got to see his soul going to be saved because that banker got friends that is a banker. And he's going to bring his friends with him. That person that is a dressmaker own store is going to bring them, and that's all building up. Are you all getting what I'm saying? That all for the building? No, we we glad that anybody come over. If they got a construction work, let me talk about my brother. He got his own business. How many people have come through here who didn't have a job that he has hired? I know he ain't saying it all, but I'm sure it's some. That's what it is, not just because they're getting saved with one, and he probably got friends. If they got an expert in something, he can tell them about it. See, just look, at it. it's not just, you know, are you all getting this? It's not just the banker coming over here. He got friends, and, this, and that's what it is. I told my friends about it. You told you when you got, I, t I, just couldn't, I c just couldn't keep it to myself. I had to tell somebody, and who you going to tell your friends? Who you want to be saved. And when you tell them and they see the change in your life. And I'm getting ready to close. And I went to the class, my class reunion. I got saved when I was 15. And they were still surprised that I was still holding on. 63 years old. Got saved when I was 15. Speaking in tongues in school. I didn't know how to control it. Then it but I was saved. And I wasn't going to. And things I was going to do. Went through college and pledged the fraternity and still came out saved and sanctified. You know, and at that reunion, they were surprised that, they, you know, they was happy, but they were surprised to see that I was still saved and still a, sanct a normal with the sanctified people. You know, and, and that's what it's all about. That was a testimony. And some of them remembered, they, you know, stuff, I forgot what I did. You know, you don't want to remember all that stuff before you got 15. And they were telling me about stuff we used to do and stuff like that. And I had to go back and I say, but look at God now. I say, I don't play like that no more. I don't play like that no more. Because it's real. And, and we got, I, I know I didn't go through the outline. But think about your uh, hall of faith, what you have in your life. The people that were saved. You know, just think about it. That's what he did in the book of uh, the book of Matt, uh, book of Hebrew. He went down the Hall of Faith. Seventeen people he called out, not no superheroes. They didn't have no spectac nothing spectacular in their life, but they were named because of their faith. Taste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God.